So this is a doubt related to simple phenomena of the magnetism. Question number 25. So in the question, a student want to demagnetize a permanent bar magnet. A student want to remove the magnetic properties of a bar magnet. She suggested three steps, like place the magnet in a long coil, switch on a large alternating current, then switch off the current and remove the bar magnet from the coil. See it and explain whether the steps will be able to demagnetize a magnet. So one mark, you mentioned no. The second thing, because what students should do, students should keep the current on, like students should not switch off the current and slowly move the magnet out from the magnetic field. So the answer here, it won't work so that it will not be magnetized. So what students should do, uh, like should not switch off the supply. And pull the magnet out from the magnetic field of a coil. while the current is on. So if you want to demagnetize, if you want to demagnetize, we should connect an EC supply. We place a bar magnet. And we should gradually, slowly pull this magnet out. So it will be demagnetized. So in the question, why this won't work? Because student did not remove the magnet, just switch on the uh, current and then switch off. Does not make difference. So that's why this won't work at all. Question 5, 11 and 23, okay. I will discuss that as well. In question 26, in question 26, figure 10.3 shows a view from the above of another vertical wire which is carrying a current. So there's a wire which is carrying a current. And the point W is one centimeter vertically above the top surface of a car. So this is uh, point W is there, which is above the top surface of the car. State the magnetic field strength of S, T and W in terms of magnetic field strength at R. So when we compare the magnetic field strength, it depends on the distance. Like example, so this is a current carrying conductor and one point is placed one centimeter from this. And another side, one point, another point is there, which is also one centimeter apart. So if two points are same distance from the current carrying conductor, they will have the same strength of magnetic field. So when you compare, compare to R, so R is example, one centimeter apart from the wire, but S is closer to the wire. So means at point S, the magnetic field will be stronger. Why it is stronger? Because S is closer. So if the point is closer to the wire, which is carrying a current, it will experience stronger magnetic field as compared to a point which is away. The second one at T, when you compare T and R, you can clearly see the distance between R and T is same. It's same as one centimeter. So as the distance is same, what will be the strength when we compare the strength of the Magnetic field because R and T are at the same distance from the wire. So it means that will be same strength. And when we compare R with W, so R and W also have the same. R and W also have the same strength of a magnetic field. So if they have the same strength of the magnetic field, that will also experience the same. Like if they are same distance from the wire, they will experience the same strength of magnetic field. That's why it is. It is stronger because it is closer, but T and W are same distance as R. So it will experience the same strength of magnetic field. 
Then question five. The multiple choice question five is there. The end of a three metal rod are tested. Look, if we have two magnets, so if we have the two magnets, one side they will attract and the other side they will repel because one side the light poles will be there attract and the other side it will uh, like unlike poles are there it will attract and light poles it will repel but if we have a magnet and a magnetic material so magnet and a magnetic material will always attract it is independent which side we bring so there is always attraction between the magnet and the magnetic material. So end Q, when we bring this end Q near R, it is it attract. When we bring end Q near S, it is also attracted. So what this gives an evidence, this gives an evidence that this is not a permanent magnet, this is a magnetic material. Like it is not permanently magnet, it is a magnetic material, can be magnetized, but it's not a magnet. So this rod is not a magnet. And when you check, when we bring Q to T, like we bring Q to T, it was attracted. But when we bring Q to U, like bring Q to U, it is, was repelled. So it means one side it is attracted, one side repelled. So it means this is a magnet. And what about the rod one? Because rod one is also one side it is attracted and one side repelled. So it means that is also a magnet. So rod one and rod three are the magnet. And rod two is a made up of magnetic material, but it is not a permanent magnet. So the question is, which of the metal rod is a magnet? So we have rod one and rod three. The next one is question 11. So again, we have a magnet and a magnetic material. Like this is not a magnet. This is a permanent magnet, but this is a magnetic material. And for magnetic material, always opposite pole will induce. Like if we have, say, a permanent magnet and which is having a permanent pole, but the magnetic material does not have a permanent pole, it will only develop the poles when it is there in the external magnetic field. So if you are bringing a north pole, so south pole will be here and north pole, so it will be attractive. And opposite will happen if you bring from other side the magnetic material, like near the south. So north will be here and south will be here, so it will be attracted. So for a magnetic material, always opposite pole induced, and it is always attracted towards the magnet. So we have a permanent magnet and a magnetic material. So if we bring what will be the pole on P, so that will be south, and what will the pole on Q, that will be north, and it will be attracted. So it will be south and north. So P will be south and Q will be north. So C will be the right answer. And we have question 23. So if we want to demagnetize a material, we should always place perpendicular to the magnetic field, Earth's magnetic field. Otherwise, it, it won't be demagnetized. Like example, we have north, south, east, and west. So if you want to demagnetize a material, we should always place right angle to the Earth magnetic field, 90 degree or right angle, if you want to demagnetize. So, but if it is parallel to the strong magnetic field, it will be magnetized. So a piece of steel which is slightly magnetized. We hit it several times with a hammer. What is the effect this will have if the steel is parallel to strong magnetic field? So if it is parallel to strong magnetic field, it will make it magnetized. Like it will, because the strong magnetic field, when we are hitting the substance, we are disturbing the arrangement of a domain, but the 
strong magnetic field make these domains align that's why it will material will be magnetized but if we are placing it right angle or 90 degree to the earth's magnetic field and we hammer it what will happen it will demagnetize so for this one if we are placing the steel parallel like same as the direction of a magnetic field and hammer try to hammer it in that case the domain will align according to the external magnetic field and it will magnetize strongly. But if we place it right angle or perpendicular to the weaker magnetic field and hit the magnet by using a hammer, it will disturb the arrangement or the domains will lose their like dimension. As a result, the material will be demagnetized. So option B will be the right answer for this. In this question, a permanent magnet uh, is made from only one material. So what is that material? So it should be steel. Underline a material from which it is possible to make a permanent magnet. And then what is the direction? The next question is, what is meant by the direction of a magnetic field? What is the meant by direction of a magnetic field? Direction of a magnetic field is out from north and into south. So state the direction of magnetic field between the poles in figure 7.1. So in figure 7.1, it is from right, uh, sorry, it is from left to right. Or you can also say out from north and into south or left to right, or you can also mention direction of the force on North Pole. So here the answer is simple that the direction of a magnetic field is from left to right.